party playlist got all the problematic faves on it. Or maybe just all the niggas that rap is problematic. I don't know. <laughs> you never know. Uh, I was like, damn. Both can go. Both can be true. We need to watch out for the niggas that yell at us. <laughs> it was Dr. Dre, uh, Diddy, mm-hmm. Fifty Cent, Pun. Kanye. Yeah, that you know. That's why when people be trying to hide these high high morals, I'm like, hey, hey, hey if you also say that you out here defending Tupac because he have to be your favorite rapper, mm, you know, you got to say like we all are problematic when it comes to this shit, and nobody is above getting. Particularly if you enjoy rap, <laughs> you are not above it. Yeah, I ain't even gonna say we. I don't hit nobody. All right, here we go. I mean, when I mean that, it's like oh, never mind. Take your time. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, you get into it. Let's Mm-mm. let's do this part. Mm-mm. You don't have to. Okay. Because <laughs> I was I was about to say when 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 because a lot of times they the same people to write the articles and stuff. You be like, why are you writing these articles? Oh, I know what you mean. I know. I was just saying. I don't say we because. All I did was listen to the shit. I ain't playing that, catch nobody. I ain't sold no drugs. <laughs> I ain't like, if that's your morals, cool. But I, I ain't out here punching people. I'm with you on that one. I never felt like a CD purchase entitled me to none of the crimes these niggas did or the profits. And I'm not out here defending them either. Anyway. All right. <clears throat> hey, welcome to another episode of the Blackout Test Podcast. I'm your host, Rod. Joined as always by my co-host. Karen. And we're live on a Tuesday, ready to do some podcasting. The official weapon of the show is... Taser? No. Oh, no. voting chair. You had a good streak. Damn, I had a good more run. Everybody reset the clock to zero. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, the unofficial sport. Bullet ball. A bullet ball. Extreme, extreme, extreme. Um, let, you know, first things first, do we have any uh, banter? Mm-mm. All right. Well, uh, I do. Okay. So it was a trick question. I could have just went ahead and played the music. <laughs> This story consists of my recollections of a very unusual young man. What should we do? Listen, this is a fast banter. First, I got a DMV appointment. I just logged on first thing in the morning, and apparently that's when they open up new appointments. It's booked out all the way for like 90 days, but you can go ahead and wake up early in the morning and go on there, and then like that day's appointments are available until they're taken up. So I got a DMV appointment, but it's not for a couple months. But I got that done. Oh, I see what you're saying. Sometimes, like the thoughts appointment, whatever. Like, hey, you know what? Uh, in case anybody cancel, you can yank it up if you're out here early enough. It didn't look like it was canceled. I think all of it's booked up until like 90 days from now. But every morning they must open up. Like, here's the days remaining in those 90 days. So, uh, if you need to book an appointment, okay, within 90 days, like okay. whatever's available is 90 days out. So I won't be going till August. I'm with you now. All right. The next thing is uh, I, my trainer at the gym has been encouraging me to document my progress and all this stuff, even if it's just for myself. And I don't know. I felt kind of weird and uncomfortable. I didn't want to just lean into all the stuff that is stereotypical. I don't know why. It's a mental hurdle. It has nothing to do with her. It has nothing, <laughs> nothing to do with y'all. There's nothing wrong. <laughs> nope. It's, there's nothing wrong with it. Other people do it all the time. Mm-hmm. I don't know fucking why. In my head, I'm like, I don't want to be a basic bitch, you know, where I'm like, <laughs> you know, guys, I'm doing my health journey. You know, I don't want to be that person or whatever. But that's bullshit because it's just a thing to stop you from doing stuff. It's like not wearing gloves at the gym because my, my, my toxic masculinity male friends say they bitch gloves. Well, <laughs> I've never given a fuck about any of that shit, so I'll, I'll be the bitch in your mind. I don't feel like I'm the bitch, but if you feel that way, fine. You know, see a bitch, come try me, you know? Um, so I, I haven't documented my progress really at all. You know, I, po- I, I mean, I've always posted stuff on social media, you know, pictures of stuff or whatever and I'm committed to everything like I've never cut, shortcut anything I always do my exercise goals I always make them I always do my workouts um, and I've been doing this now with a trainer for I mean since the about February so we're going on about four months I think we're like 17 16 weeks of this Woo-hoo! and I've gotten a lot better at 
stuff. There's just stuff I can do where I don't know that my appearance has changed that much, to be honest. But it's stuff that I can do that I that I just couldn't do before. You know, I can do that plank now. I do the plank. I could put 25 pound weight on my back and do the plank. Um, Aw, shit! Now look at you. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, just just a bunch of just a bunch of goals like and stuff I could feel. But once again, I haven't really documented it, and I probably did it wrong because I should have taken pics before I even started to be like, "This is where I'm at," even if it's just for me. But uh, yesterday I did post like my first picture, which is just uh, me flexing my arm to be like, oh, I can see something like a muscle in there a little bit. <laughs> what did I not, not, yes, because I can't form one. Yeah, and my trainer had told me, you know, you should do that. Uh, she's like, you know, in addition to um, it, you know, motivating yourself, uh, it motivates other people and all this other stuff. And I've been like, I don't really give a fuck about other people, but <laughs> you know, I, it's not, not in a negative way, Wait, but, but I don't yeah. want to turn this into a thing where I'm just seeking validation from other people. Cause that's never what it was about. Right. And once you start getting addicted to that validation from other people, then it's like, you know, what other shit are you going to do? Cause you know, there's a lot of shortcuts and stuff to look good for the gram. That's not necessarily what I want to do. I don't want to, you know, starve myself. I don't want to, uh, you know, try to, you know, just get used to these like quick, fast goals. This is one of those things that's going to take a long time mm -hmm. and it's going to be, you know, it's the same reason I don't want to like weigh myself every day and look at the scale and get obsessed with that because, you know, I'm gaining muscle and losing fat. It, it's not, the scale's not going to 100% reflect how I feel and look. Anyway, oh my God, those pictures blew up. Everybody loved them. You know, everybody was like, oh my God, you know, this, oh, I can see the progress and all this stuff, which I'm like, y'all have never seen my arms before. I don't even, I only wear baggy <laughs> clothes, but I guess they could feel it too. They was like, yeah, good, you know, good for you or whatever. And I can't, I can see the progress, you know, I can see little muscles forming and shit, but, um, you know, I'm glad I did it, you know, and I appreciate everybody that had kind things to say uh about it and then everyone kept commenting on my shirt but i don't even know who that guy is that's just a shirt that i like to design <laughs> and, and people I honest, don't believe you and honestly if y'all know who that guy is i'm questioning y'all my <laughs> dear my dear brothers and sisters in christ because the things that y'all were saying that picture was of that man i don't know what kind of person would even know how would you even know who that person was ain't that to make it nasty unless man. you was Oh, so Karen, you know too? <laughs> oh man, wow! I'm learning some things about the audience today. I thought y'all was really sanctified, holy go, holy rollers, but I guess y'all <laughs> must be holy Ghost living in the den five, of iniquity. Five baptized. Maybe JL Coven was right about y'all. <laughs> um, and then uh, the last thing is, and it's kind of important, but uh, it's kind of a programming note. So we are switching host for our podcast, meaning we have to leave Spotify for hosting and move our podcast to another hosting platform. Uh, we'll have a big announcement about why and all that stuff behind the scenes. It's, gonna, it's really like a cool thing we're doing, but unfortunately, that means stuff has to end. Like we have to turn off the ads, which, you know, for y'all is great, right? Hey, yeah, no ads. No ads, no more ads. <laughs> uh, we have to turn off the ads for now. And then also we uh, had to turn off the just a tip. Now, I want to say there's like maybe 70, 80 people that affects, you know, not a shit ton of people, but still it's important for those folks. They'll still have access to it. I think until like June 3rd or something. So you can still listen to all those if you're just a tipper, but we turned off that, that part of it so that, um, so you don't, so the $5 to get one extra episode a week is no longer a thing. Um, and it was something we just have to do cause we're switching host. If the uh, next host offers something similar, we'll put it back up. Um, if like push comes to shove and we need to find a way to do that for people, we'll see what we can do. I'm not sure what our options we have, but, um, the, the, the good that, so if you got that email this morning, is is not it's not like oh no we accidentally turned it's it off it's, like, like it's something fruit. we have to do mm -hmm. in order to transfer a host yeah, those and are the only people everybody else you good it's not going to impact anybody else in any other way your feed will pop up like normal yeah and we look forward to letting y'all in on uh the moves that we're making because i think y'all are going to be very it's going to be a celebration and mm -hmm. i hope uh you know stick with us and, and and enjoy all that stuff and of course you can still sign up 
premium on our website to get access to all the episodes that are behind the paywall um so uh you know if you want to do that the blackoutist.com slash premium the link is always in the show notes all right that's it for all my stuff i had to do up front you ready to get into some music if you are i mean news <laughs> <laughs> Diddy stuff continues uh, because there's, you know, plenty of stuff to talk about and then there's the fallout from it and then people getting asked about it and all this stuff. And the latest round of Diddy news, uh, Missa, Missa Hilton, who I believe is, she shares a son, Justin Combs, with Diddy. Okay. Uh, she took the Instagram to address that tape coming out you know because people are now doing that thing where they're looking at the women in his orbit the women he used to deal with the women he's dealing with the women he has around him and all the people around him really but especially women because for some reason we always turn this into like a you know burn the witch situation and make the women responsible for his his shit you know and of course also because it's an emotional thing and i'm sure it affected her and she felt like i need to say something um and i think people are now seeing if a man's capable of doing what he did to cassie and having it covered up since 2016 what has he done to other people who are even less famous than that less resources than that less recourse than that you know who who did choose to hopefully like watch him move on to someone else and 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 just hope he don't come back to you you know such a situation so she's yep Put out this statement. I'm heartbreak broken that Cassie must relive the horror of her abuse, and my heart goes out to her. I know exactly how she feels, and through my empathy, it has triggered my own trauma. These young people were raised by women who want the best for them. We put God and education first, and have always been united in our mutual effort to support their dreams. Two of the youngest do not have their mother here, and it has been our duty to support them. Um, talking about his kids, um, and which is also a thing too, because. He's very close with his sons. And they, like they're always around him and influenced by him. He's tried to like make them into kind of like walking his steps. And it's like, I can't imagine the heartbreaking anguish that, you know, that must cause the mother if uh, of, of the child if, if they have experienced or seen or heard about any of this abuse. Uh, their father needs help and I'm praying that he truly does the personal work and receives it. Um, so yeah i think that's that's what she had to say um which you know i and for her i understand why she'd be saying stuff about prayers and stuff I, i'm not this isn't the same to me as kelly price like we just need to pray and the brother need to i feel like this is a more you know realistic uh thing um peloton is uh stopping playing diddy music and that's from all his classics and that's big because they have a list this mouth long like they have tons of artists and tons of music and a lot of these artists you know depending on how big they are and how much music they have they have classes like uh, uh cycling classes and weightlifting classes and you know zumba class all with like hey this is this is a beyonce class for this a beyonce where they just play like certain artists music like in that class and then periodically they just play it all of the time so that's going to be really really big because you're stripping you're going to strip a lot of choice of music for people across the board right i and i mean yeah and it's weird because he gave his artists back their publishing in some cases but then like does this extend to like yo we're not playing no bad boy music you know mm -hmm. like i just wonder just, but yeah they said basically thank you for your concerns uh, we take issue very, this issue very seriously and confirm Peloton has paused the use of Sean Combs' music as well as removed the Bad Boy Entertainment Artist Series from our platform. This means our instructors are no longer using his music in any newly produced classes. Again, thank you for sharing your concerns. Thank you for being a member of our Peloton community. Yeah, and also the, the thing is if you erase literally anything with him on it, that is, people underestimate the 
vastness of how much music he was on, made, and or featured during a certain period of time. And so, you know, you literally probably hundreds and possibly, you know, thousands of songs. We're talking about the remakes and all this stuff. Like, like it, it, is a, it, it is a huge library. So, you know, it's a lot of songs that somebody has to take the time to dig and, and do that. And, and I understand their stance. And they say pause, which means it's a possibility at some period of time they go, okay, he's not hot, people not complaining, and they just slowly bring it back. Yeah. I, I Yeah, like I said, I can kind of – one, yeah, because I feel like this is kind of part of the cycle. Mm-hmm. Like the same thing happened with the Cosby Show, mm-hmm. you know, and stuff where it's like, oh, we gotta we gotta cut this out, guys. It's not good right now. And then somehow we end up, you know, eventually after a certain amount of time coming right back. Yeah, because people have such short term memory, and they go, oh, y'all ain't hot about it no more. Okay. Yeah, I, I can't even call it short term memory. I think it's a, a rational emotional reaction that emotions fade over time and this shit is too ubiquitous for us to be picking and choosing forever like if we made this a forever thing there just would not be entertainment for the most part i agree too, so so i don't even think it's like a matter of like you know people just can't keep you know people not like i i just think it's it's natural that it fades but in the immediacy of it you're not going to be able to rationalize doing it and it's and once again i I always say this about um about myself i've never boycotted any musician i Mm -hmm. but i have not listened to musicians strictly because i'm like i can't not think about what the fuck you're talking about and what you did you know and and i think most people probably are on that line um but they call it a boycott they call it something bigger but it's Mm -hmm. really not it's just if you literally can't hear a kanye song without thinking about how terrible some of the shit he said and done is, that's why you don't listen to Kanye. Because if I go through your list, right. there's going to be somebody on there where it's like, they did horrible things, and it's going to be like, yeah, I don't think about that when I listen to James Brown. I don't right. think about that when I listen to Marvin Gaye. I don't think about that when I listen to Doja Cat or whatever the fuck. So I just, for for those folks, I get it, because I think we're many of us are similar. We're just not all sitting around going because we made a boycott or something. Agreed. Uh, Diddy and Cassie's former makeup artist, Mila Morales, uh, recently uh, went on Extra and uh, talked about a time she had to help Cassie with her makeup and call a doctor for her. And now a former good friend of Cassie's is coming forward to say that she feared for Cassie's safety and her own. We were always scared of Puff. Like, he's he's a powerful person. And we don't know what would happen to us if we spoke out. Myla Morales, a makeup artist who worked with both Diddy and Cassie, spoke with our special correspondent, Page Six's Carlos Greer. Did you know about the art artist who worked with both Diddy and... First of all, what? Does Diddy look so fucking scary in this picture right here? <laughs> God damn, this nigga looks scary as shit. He like a fucking <laughs> someone said Candyman in the mirror three times. <laughs> he just popped up the side of purpose to make it that dark, right? And of course, cat, you know, yeah, that 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 picture looks scary as shit. Now maybe it's just we can all the pictures gonna look scary in hindsight, but god yes, damn, they are. And Cassie spoke with our special correspondent, Page Six's Carlos Greer. Did you know about? the physical abuse did you ever hear stories or beating her i did not know i did not know but i witnessed it myla recounted an incident at the beverly hills hotel what does that mean to not know about it but to witness it i guess meaning i did not know i guess maybe it was you know how people make up lies. So you see something, you're like, oh, what happened? They're like, such, 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 and you being a makeup artist, but like, okay, now you're like, oh, there was more to this than what the person was telling me at the time. No, one, one Grammy, Grammy weekend. weekend. Because everybody assumes it. Everybody you know around you knows it. And this is not always true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, more, more than, than a decade, decade ago. What did you hear? What did you think you were witnessing? I don't, I don't even want to like go back to it because it's like, it's just, it, it's, it's triggering. All I witnessed was him walking into the room and saying, where the f- is she? And I, I and I, I, I didn't know what was going on because I was like, I just woke up from a slumber. And next thing you know, all I hear in the, from the bedroom was, you know, just, I don't want to like go back and think about. So you're at the Beverly Hills Hotel. You know, you hear something. You don't see Puffy actually physically attacking her, but you hear something. I did not know what was going on. I just 
All I can think of was to get her out of there. What happened when she appeared, when you saw, when you saw her? What she had, she, she was bruised. I mean, badly bruised, like knots on her head, a black eye. All I cared about was to get her to safety. And I took her into my house and kept her there for a few days. And I literally called my friend who was a doctor at the time to treat her because we couldn't bring her to the hospital. We didn't know what the hell to do. At, at that, that point. point, you know, who are we gonna call? I, I'm scared. Just even talking about this, but I feel like somebody has to. What did you make of his apology? My behavior on that video is inexcusable. Just a PR stunt? Like, that's ridiculous. Like he didn't even mention her name. And yeah. if he was apologetic about it, he would mention her name, but he didn't. And that's, that's what I don't understand. And I just feel like he's a great, talented Mr. Ripley. Yeah, I don't, I, I guess, I mean, that is a thing that happens with abuse where people see and hear things, but, um, and maybe you put it together more in hindsight, or maybe just, you know, this is the fear, this is why I per perpetrate is because people are scared, you know? Yeah, and also, and it's one of those things where, yeah, I get it, I get it. Everybody's upset. Everybody's mad. Everybody want to burn him and everybody around him down. Anybody that was involved and or saw anything or could have reported anything at any period of time. I, I mean, I get that. But sometimes in all situations, just because something happens does not always mean that people are aware. Sometimes it can honestly be, oh, I really didn't know. And like you say, putting it behind, behind putting the pieces together after the fact. But everybody go, you should have known. You know what? Abusers don't make shit obvious sometimes. You know, that's the whole purpose of the abuse. And sometimes the person that's abused make excuses for the abuser to to also cover it up so people around them won't really think or second guess these things. And I'm not excusing their behavior and I'm not excusing them not reporting it. But also I understand why. And so a lot of times, you know, this person was scared too. So yeah. so 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 it's not like you know, everybody don't have the courage at any time they see things happen around them that's not right to run and report it. But everybody want to burn everybody down to the ground right now. That everybody was like, well, you should have known. You should. It's like, oh, okay, okay. Oh, I hear what y'all saying, but is that realistic for everybody all of the time? No. Well, also, I think it's a thing where um, everyone wants to imagine themselves like taking it to the to the extreme and being like, I would stop this. I would do this. I would do that. Um, also, for the most part, people don't understand the cycle that the person being abused is often not going to let you do that shit mm -hmm. and tell you that a bunch of shit, you know, this, oh, he doesn't really do this. Oh, it's my fault. Right. Um, it's the first you know, time. I can't go to the hospital uh, because mm -hmm. then he'll look bad and blah, blah, blah. And this is also this woman's employer because she's a makeup artist. Right. So, um, and we know for a fact that this dude has. Uh, or we know it's been alleged that he's threatened and harassed and had people harmed and all this shit and shot someone in a club. I can guarantee you a lot of people were like, fuck that. I like, don't want them problems. I don't, like, I don't know how far he'll go if he'll do this to her and uh, then what the, who am I? Yeah. So I definitely get it. I will, I'm not playing it in order to like pile on her or whatever. I was just more surprised at the idea of I didn't know about it, but I witnessed it as kind of an interesting trick of the mind to that your mind must do to itself to make you be like no i'm you know i did what i could but it's like well it sounds like you knew about it because and i'm not saying once again i'm not casting blame i'm saying i just can't imagine you let someone stay in your house for days to heal up from injuries and call the doctor to your house to help her but then would say i, I didn't know about this abuse it's like well i mean how could you not at that point um Cameron got some publicity out of this whole thing too. Um, someone at CNN thought it was a good idea to call Cameron and have him talk about Diddy. Who, who wanted to know his opinion? Uh, um, so I guess. Um, Did they ask Ja? Right, right. Uh, Abby Phillip is the uh, host of this uh, the show, a uh, black woman. And uh, it's kind of a, it's almost like a bigger insult because it is a black woman. Like you went on her platform and was just, 
it was clown time or whatever. Um, but at the same time, I'm I'm like I have so many questions about who booked him, why they booked him, um, why who thought it was a good idea, who who briefed him on the interview, all this stuff. Because I've had we've had Cameron as a guest on Game Theory before and interview him and. I mean, he's just a wild card. He's like he's a funny guy and stuff, but he's not here to have any serious conversation. His brand on his show with Mace is very, you know, immature and and whatnot. Like it's like he's not here to be an adult and grow up. He's forty eight, but he just he's not trying to act like an adult with most shit. Right, you know? and this is somebody where you go, y'all are trying to have a serious conversation. Girl. Yeah, I just can't. I mean, maybe someone wasn't familiar. I could see. I could even see if you got Mace. I feel like the interview would have been different, but Mace probably yes. wouldn't have done this interview. To be honest, like, why Agreed. am I going on CNN to talk about Diddy? All uh, right, and they probably asked. They Sorry. probably asked, and he probably like, "Fuck no, I'm good." Right. Um, I don't know how to turn the volume down on this shit. Um, and every time. I okay. All right. Fuck it. We'll have to. Go to Twitter to get the the click. The, Jesus, <laughs> y'all determined it. I, that commercial said, "Bitch, I ain't muting." Right, mute the this. Fuck? They were like, "You gonna get this? You gonna get this music? You get all six of these seconds." <laughs> right. Um. All right. Let me let me see uh, if I can get to my page because I think I shared this last night. Uh. But yeah, it's like I can't really be shocked that Cameron of all people gave him a very immature like interview and response to all this shit because he's just a very immature type of dude and his brand is immaturity i think actually a lot of people give him space in a weird way that they don't because it's like that lower expectations thing so like him and mace kind of brought back a lot of the like no homo type stuff that people were doing but people like instead they're like oh you just crazy that's crazy or whatever they would people, not accept that from so now else. people say that instead of no homo but they still mean the same thanks stuff. for being here mm -hmm. all right here here we go thanks for being here first when you saw that video of diddy cassie uh in that hotel did you recognize that sean combs um, but I want to say, first of all, when I seen the video, um, everything in the video is egregious. I'm against, uh, I don't support, uh, all the charges that's alleged against him. I don't support any of that traffic and minors, uh, domestic violence. I'm totally against it. So when I seen the video, yeah, I was kind of upset with it. Uh, no, being that I know him, he's not necessarily a friend, but yeah, I was upset when I seen it. But did, did you recognize him? Anything I just said, did you recognize right. that I kind of anger at all from your experiences? I don't know like that. What do you mean? Do I be recognized? Do I recognize them? I've seen them. What do you mean my experiences? I've seen them and I thought I thought it was disgusting. I didn't do a zoom in to see if it was really him or nothing, but he admitted it was him. So, yeah, it was him. So already it's kind of animosity from his side. He's kind of got shades on, a bucket hat. Yeah, yeah, I'm about to say, yeah, it's like just the way you look. It's like, oh, you need to take this serious. Like, we on an interview on national television in front of millions of people, and you didn't have the courtesy to, to, to look this lady in her eyes. And the way things are booked, um, clearly, because people are going to, he's going to say some shit later to make it sound like, oh, man, they just had me on here. Who, how the fuck this even happened? But the way these things are booked, they vet you. So they ask you pre-interview questions. They tell you what it's going to be. If they don't tell you, they tell your people what it's going to be so they can brief you. Because it's somebody's job to let um, you know. They normally have like a couple minutes of talking to you before you even go on the air. Mm. Um, you have to get mic'd up, makeup, all this shit. So it's not like you just show up, hop on the air, and then that's it. Um, and then um, the on the other side, uh, they typically do a good job vetting who to have on. Now, I think this is kind of emblematic of something I've been saying about cable news for a long time. Um, and I know we had that listener that just disagreed, but I, I just, shit like this keeps happening. They, it's entertainment. Yes. And the Cameron is entertaining, but he's not, there's no serious reason you should have him on. This most viral moment on, a, on cable news was the you mad thing with bill o'reilly like mm -hmm. he's not he's a troll he's funny he's 
goofy. He's not, you know, he's the, he's the snap snitching guy. He's not the guy for we would like to have a serious conversation. And in that way, he knows that too and puts it on display here. What did you think about the apology that he gave in that other video? Ain't me for this, the apology ain't for me to decide for Cassie. What, what, I, what I think about it don't matter. He ain't do nothing to me. Cassie need to, need to ask Cassie if she accept the apology. I told you I feel, I said what I said. I want to play a conversation that you had on your podcast back in September with Mace. Listen. Yeah. When you had your record deal, why did you take me to Biggie Smalls and not Bad um, Boy? Man, it's almost going to bring me to tears to say this. I just, being, being that I saw you, you as, as such a good friend, I wanted to put, put you, you with somebody I knew with. Thank you, man. I really appreciate that. A lot of people ask me that on Instagram, yeah, I knew man. Don't have me instantly, just out here crying and shit, man. I don't want to get emotional knew, in here, man. Instantly, I knew Biggie would, would do right by you. Can, Can you tell, tell us a little, little bit more about that? that? I mean, is, there, um, is there something known in the industry about how what? Diddy treated his artists? Is he taking a shot? The fuck is that? So I'm gonna get some cheeks after this horsepower joint. What? So he has his own, uh, I guess, penis enhancement. Uh, I don't even know what you call it. Like his own, basically, like uh, Viagra supplement type thing. The shit you buy over a gas station counter, gas station counter, uh, called Pink Horsepower. He also promoted his stuff on Game Theory when he was there like he pulled it out and was like you know i don't know if i don't remember if it made the air or not i just remember he it, definitely did it, it did not oh it didn't okay he mm -hmm. definitely promoted it that that day on the show mm -hmm. um but we have live to tape which means we have like a bunch of hours to cut and change everything yes. and also um our interview could be like 10 minutes and y'all will see like three yeah so we so just cut the bullshit chop, out yeah they have to but chop it down this is live on the air mm -hmm. straight to straight to the viewer and nobody expected him to do this right and of course this has nothing to do with anything you know it's just here's a chance to to promote my uh to promote my 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 brand uh he looked almost nervous the way his hand was shaking holding that shit up but uh, you know it's just a stunt and I think before they cut to the clip you can almost see him looking down uh right around yeah, here looking, like he was opening that, it or like getting it out to be like when we come back i'm gonna do this bullshit yeah and also from the beginning he kind of is not paying attention yeah like from the beginning he's looking over to the side like 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 even with the shades and his way his head is turning he's not serious about the interview and the person in front of him like he's there's like other shit around and directly in front of him is very distracting whatever that stuff is and this just happened to be one of the things that he probably had set prep planned or whatever i think this is the entire point of doing this interview yeah this, this moment i was right um i'm just going off what mace said mace took me the big uh shout out to her uh professionalism because uh her face never changed and i would have been like nigga like my face would have said nigga i might not have said nigga out of my face but i my face would have been like we don't get this nigga off the air okay bro this, you don't care this cool who who booked this like the producer is gonna get a cocky to whoever booked this too yeah and i was excited this is why you have professional people and i am not knocking it and not these new media folks is not fucking professional because she like you said her face didn't change her demeanor didn't change and she just looked at the camera like okay well, um mm -hmm. yeah shout out there being a pro i don't really know puff is like mace no puff so i appreciate what mace said and of course uh, that's my brother so if he felt that way then he felt that way i can't really tell you how puff moves or anything like that mace may know better than me because he was signed to puff i wasn't but my show does come on at 8 a.m. Eastern on YouTube. It's called It Is What It Is. Y'all make sure y'all check it out. I mean, I might get some more information out of Mace from there. But for me to tell you mm -hmm. how Puff acting and all that, I don't know. I never was signed to him. Yeah. What about the industry in general? I mean, so many people have pointed out that Diddy couldn't get away with this stuff if there weren't a lot of people protecting him. Do, Do you think, think that's, that's the case? case? Who the talent agent for this joint? Like, you think I'll be sitting around watching what Diddy do and all this? I didn't know this was a Diddy joint that was inviting me to. Yo, who? Yo, who booked me for this joint? 
So he talked about all the people. Thanks. Yeah, Thanks for joining us. Thank you for your time tonight. Yeah, yeah, yo, thank, yo, thank you for having me. You enjoy. Right. So then he went on his show to explain this. Yeah, yeah let's let's actually talk about that. Before you get into the questions, like elephant in the room. <laughs> you were on another show. Yeah, I came. <laughs> I, I came. I know. I'm, I'm surprised he's wearing the same outfit two days in a row. That's interesting. I didn't even go home <laughs> last night because I went to the studio. I washed up though, so I'm good. I ain't gonna say none of that. But <laughs> yeah, man, you know, um, you was gonna say something? Oh no, I see your hand. Yeah, no, they invited me on the show to talk about uh, what's going on with Diddy and all that. And then my my thing about it was May stat is that they didn't invite me on to say about how successful our show is or the positive stuff we do in the community. How every day, five days a week, Mace talks to kids on a Zoom call. Mace doesn't even promote this. I'm going to promote this for Mace. Is that every day at five o'clock, it don't matter what's going on, what's happening, um, where he's at. It does. It could be money involved. It could be a photo shoot. It could be whatever. He stops what he's doing to talk, talk to kids around the world about being positive and um, doing. Now the point here already. You knew what they can't, had you come on for. I do not. You trying to flip this into some, we just trying to be positive and it, it, you could have just said no. When y'all, hey, we want you to come on and talk about Diddy. No. I guarantee you they asked because they are not going to invite you on I know now. because I've been on this side of the industry. You do so, there's so much shit you have to do before you can just put some motherfucker on the air. You can't just put a mic in someone's face and be like, all right, man, you're on the air with us. There's a lot of pre pre preparation. There's a lot of questions. There's a lot of talking to their people. Hey, this is what's gonna be. There's a lot of last minute no shows, by the way. There's a lot of like shit. We thought we had Cam, but at the last second he said he don't want to do it. You know? So it's it, there's this idea that he's about the float of they just threw me out there and you know, I just wanna only talk about positive things like our show and talking to kids. Fuck out of here. And all jokes aside, this goes back, and this, in my opinion, confirms Kelly Rowland. Because I guarantee you, one of her stipulations was like, we're not talking about Beyonce. And it was oh, like, yeah, yeah. we're we going to talk about, about Beyonce. That. And next she was like, well, bitch, I'm not coming back. Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, to me, that, confir that, which, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, 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 that confirms that, yeah, mm -hmm. she had this, and y'all went against that. So she was like, well, I'm not doing this interview no more because y'all told me we were not going to talk about this. For the record, Karen's talking about an old episode we did, I don't even know how long ago it was, where Kelly Rowan was on, like, the, 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 the Today Show or Good Morning America or something, ended up leaving. They said it's because she had a... Uh, so she didn't like her dressing room or some shit. That was the story they floated. But the real story is they kept asking Kelly Rowland about Beyonce because Beyonce had just rolled out or announced like her new music. Yeah, and she had and just did Kelly that. Kelly was like, Netflix I'm not here thing, to yeah. do a Beyonce interview. I was here to talk about what I, me and what I'm doing. And yeah, I, I'm leaving. And so that that's why Karen's bringing that up. What they believe in and so on and so forth and to the point where you know one day he was in my house and he told me kim you can't make no noise don't come in here. i'm not playing with you like that's how serious <laughs> put me on cnn for the bullshit i'm gonna give you the bullshit that's that's just what's gonna happen so we got some so that's how he's justifying it is they put him on cnn for quote unquote the bullshit so he's gonna give you the bullshit as if he couldn't have just said no yeah, you could have said no. He wanted to promote his shit. He's a stunt queen. That's really what this was about. Free, Free promo, promo. Uh, a tease to fake horsepower. Uh, they tried to bring up when Mace uh, bought me the biggie instead of puffing. I said, yeah, if, if you seen it, what you asking me about it for? Like, nigga, it was self-explanatory. So... I, I got us a free promo. I didn't get to shout out to Dipset Couture. Make sure you go online <laughs> to <laughs> Dipset Couture. Dot us <laughs> to order some shirts and everything else but yeah i just felt that you, you tried, tried to, to use, use me pause to uh like i said it's what happened to diddy going through the down and listen the video i don't support fuck. it i don't believe in domestic violence i don't believe in uh anything that has to do with being a pedophile i don't believe in sex trafficking i think what i seen the video was egregious and, and the charges uh um fucked up, up. they really fucked up, up. Oh, wait, but nigga, I said what I said. I gave a disclaimer at the beginning, and we got on the commercial. That was that. That was that. So, and that's how that went.
And my thing, it is an interview, so it's their job to ask you more detailed questions about shit that's yeah, already now, been said. Obviously, you know, I, I'll make the point that I think all of us are making in our heads if we haven't made it enough already. But obviously, the producer and whoever booked it is also, I can't imagine what the fuck they were thinking. You know what I mean? Because Cameron has never given us any reason to expect anything from him as far as putting him in a news segment about domestic violence with someone and going, hey, can we get some... Yeah, the, it, you know, like it's just impossible areas, to imagine that. Yeah, in different areas is fine, but not when we're trying to have a real serious down. I can't. Well, I'm gonna be honest. Is in any area, I can't imagine booking him for a fucking cable news show. I just can't yeah, for cable. I can't even imagine what the fucking topic cable would be news show, right? To bring him on, so like in in a way, it's very much like a like snake scorpion crossing the river moment where I'm like, yeah, I. It's fucked up what he did, and as a 48-year-old man who's not even mature enough to have that conversation or mature enough to turn it down and be like, yeah, I just shouldn't even do it, to go in, I'm going to just get a viral moment. Yeah, absolutely admonish him. That's terrible. Also, he's kind of unadmonishable because he don't give a fuck. He don't care. So then you got to look at your own shit and be like, "That's we shouldn't have him on here. That's guests we don't book because of shit. That's guests we right. could get that do a bunch of – promo shit and they always doing saying doing something trying to get a viral moment and they might could come on here and give us that viral moment you know there's guests that basically you see them everywhere there's people that that all they they always live they always they're very available but it's low quality content mm -hmm. and you end up with some shit like this because they don't respect you or their platform because they'll go on any platform and say anything right so cnn kind of read what they sold there uh, I think that's all the Diddy stuff. Um, Simone Biles is still loving her man. I know, shocking. I know y'all y'all can't believe it. Uh, and so um, I think currently she was at a competition on Saturday in Hartford, Connecticut, and uh, people are still going at her husband and stuff and um i think got nothing else to do i you know it's so weird to me i can i mean i can believe it but it's so fucking crazy that y'all haven't let this go right it is so fucking insane that it's been months at this point and they are determined to take that one fucking interview and ride this shit to the wheels falls off to make her miserable by the way like they're not helping her they're just wanting to make her miserable yeah and then if you turn around and told people oh y'all got issues with black women y'all got issues like it black it's black women yeah it's like something wrong with y'all like, no no we're not misogynist that well then leave the shit the fuck alone then uh so she's been you know and she's addressed it several times she's made several posts and shit i, I forget what even made this one the one like maybe he said he doesn't like being referred to as miss simone bowles mr simone bowles or something and they all oh, they up in arms again it's like well that's i don't like that i i know people that just don't play like that and it's not like because i because i beat my woman and i hate her it's like they they don't play that in their house and it's fine they're their own people whatever their rules are in their relationship that makes it work that's the relationship they have if you can understand people having an open relationship a non-monogamous relationship traditional relationship non-traditional relationship if you can understand people we can understand people being like i like to watch somebody get fucked uh watch my wife get fucked by other people and we're like hey sex positive uh you know open mind but if somebody is like yeah, I actually don't want to be called Mr. Simone Biles, and she loves being the wife, seen as a wife. Oh, well, nah, we can't have that. We got to we gotta break y'all up. It's like, well, that's what the fuck they like. I don't know. Anyway, she put out this post. I'm going to quickly address this. The joke was never a joke. Y'all are blatantly being disrespectful to my husband, my relationship with my husband. So I'm going to go ahead and say this one time. Respectfully, fuck off. And if you keep commenting or tweeting at me, I'm just going to block you. Simple as that. And no, I don't need to touch grass or whatever the fuck y'all suggest. And at everyone else that supports us, we love y'all. Um, so, yeah, it's it's crazy that this is still happening. And what's funny is it sounds like what really triggered this is she's doing an event and he's there supporting her. Mm -hmm. And motherfuckers are like, even this is a problem somehow. 
Like maybe I'm wrong, maybe I missed the the thing that set everybody off, but it's just that yeah. internal I'm gonna be mad mm-hmm. energy. Mm-hmm. And now every time she shows her face, here we go. Yep, it was the other way around. Yeah, it wouldn't say shit. Right. So I I really don't understand um how this is turning uh into something so foul about it, you know? Um and 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 it's funny because you're making strange bedfellows out of people because now you're gonna have now you have conservative people that are racist against Simone Biles mm-hmm. joining in on the like yeah these fucking liberal feminist woke progressive people always they the real problem look right. at how they won't leave you alone um what's wrong with a woman feeling like her man is the catch and him feeling like some self you know that shit so now you got that these motherfuckers joining in and i'm like all this could be avoided by just leaving this shit alone mm-hmm. you know if something happens in a relationship they want to come out and tell us cool you know if you if, if you want to hear that fine you know but that but if with if with us hearing nothing i just don't get what the fuck this is happening you know um so yeah I, I, it's just such a wild thing and it's also wild that people don't want him to see pride in himself it's so such a crazy thing like all these athletes are fucking crazy like they, you don't get to be an nfl player being humble and modest and shit like especially with his story of coming from the bottom to to where he's at like of course he thinks he's fucking great and he's worked they hard and he wants to be acknowledged and all this shit and he you know he wants that for himself like i don't I don't know i don't find it's like that thing some athletes believe where they're like if you don't think you the best person on the court at all time you shouldn't even be out there it's like whatever delusion you need to have to fucking go get hit like a freight train by a freight train several times a day a day on every sunday fine you know what i mean but i just i think it's so weird how they're just fixated on that relationship uh let's see what else uh live nation is opening to figuring out common ground to settle the department of justice investigation because mm-hmm, they know they're gonna lose they know it's ridiculous these fees are fucking stupid they got fees on top of fees on top of fees that don't make fucking sense you're overcharging people you actually cornered the market on and you actually tell people and you promote your own aftermarket ticket prices and then the same fees that you charged the first time you charge those same fees again so you literally double dipping on the charges and shit like that and people are like hey this is ridiculous and every time we turn around y'all are like we don't see y'all making billions of dollars and constantly make it profit you know breaking profits and shit like this and then you have a lot of artists be like hey y'all bully you have a lot of venues but like, hey y'all bully like y'all don't allow anybody else to do it unless the venue has their own personal ticket systems it's very hard to book anywhere and particularly in america almost anywhere big or small venues in between it's very hard to book unless you go through Ticketmaster, some form of ticket master live or something like that and it got to be frustrating and because of the pandemic a lot of the smaller venues closed because they could not support a lot of like community based that actually did things because you have a lot of bands and a lot of people that toured they're not big so their whole thing was going across the country and doing these smaller venues but it's hard to do it when you have to go through ticket mass people talking about which makes sense like y'all the cost of tickets go up because it was like hey dog there used to be a time where you know a cost of a ticket wasn't a house payment but now like you know certain concerts you're going to pay a house payment every single time you go people are like i can't afford this and like, we were talking about this before and you know talking about like jello cancel all these other people can like yeah because it's like it's like either you're going to pay top dollar or either people just not gonna go because it's like, hey, dog, is it is going to see such such work? The three hundred dollars that I'm gonna get charged, and 150 of them gonna be in goddamn fees. Yeah, uh, the main issue here is that it's being sued over antitrust stuff, which means they're trying. They basically have a monopoly over ticket sales. Um, so yeah, and the DOJ don't miss. So um, uh, they definitely gonna end up. And the DOJ has been a lot more active in this thing. I think the only people I've seen beat this is. Uh, microsoft when they bought activision everybody else and that was like that was touch and go you know so it's it's gonna be interesting but the fact that they're already trying to negotiate with the doj doesn't bode well for them you know how they feel about yeah, this ruling. because they look like hey dog like give us anybody else that could did any did, that's another option other than y'all like y'all are literally embedded into everything well, yeah dog. there's no competition right so y'all get to fuck everybody 
Uh, let's see what else happened. Um, Chet Hanks hilariously explains Drake and Kendrick Lamar rap beef to his dad, Tom Hanks. He put the pictures of the text messages uh, online together. Po Tom Hanks. Uh, Big Main, can you explain Drake, Kendrick Lamar feud to me? Yeah, so Drake and this other dude, J. Cole, have been saying they, along with Kendrick, got a big three and rap. Then Kendrick put out a song saying, fuck the big three, it's just big me, initiating the beef. Then Drake was like, you got small feet because you're like five foot five or whatever. And then Kendrick was like, you're a deadbeat dad and made fun of his Canadian accent. So Drake came back and was like, oh, yeah, well, I heard you beat your wife. But literally like 30 seconds later, Kendrick put out a diss overshadowing Drake's diss where he pretty much methodically dismantled Drake's entire psyche and called him a pedophile for flirting with young girls and revealing Drake had another kid that he was hiding from the world, which turned out to be false. And Drake came back and was like, ha ha, I got your ass. I had people gave up gave you false info to make you look stupid but it didn't even matter because then kendrick just dropped another west coast banger when he really went in on labeling drake as a pedophile uh that was pretty much the sonic equivalent of when you took me to your high school in oakland and we walked in on the basketball game and everybody started going nuts like if you heard it you would just automatically know how to crip rock with a stank face while clutching an oscar in each hand with marshawn and lynch then dap him up and call him town business which solidified the win not only for kendrick but the entire west coast and then tom hanks said holy cow these are fighting words people taking sides who's winning and he said, did you not just read what I said? <laughs> Who's winning? Um, what I think is interesting with this is uh, he typed all that and none of that was in that Patois or uh, Ebonics or AAVE. Uh, he is a white man, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, he, he be doing too much, okay? I'm not even amused, okay? <laughs> like, all I noticed was like, uh, he typed that in the King's English, this motherfucker. Like, if you would have had him say it out loud, he would have been like, ah, oh, me bumble clot, don't know, the, the, you know, your school face up and on yeah, he his bullshit daddy, ass nigga. He be looking at him like, what, son? Oh, fake ass motherfucker. Anyway, white boy, some of my ass. All right. Fans resurfaced Jocelyn Hernandez calling out Amber Rose after Amber Rose endorsed Trump. That's right. The whole internet's dragging her now. We, I had only seen the initial post uh, yesterday when we did the show. Mm. Oh yeah, um, you know people gonna come back to Woodward. But now I people heard, are, heard Nick. <laughs> yeah, people are doing the oppo research on her and shit. Um, and she also since then has put a comment response on, I think it was like the shade room or somewhere, and her, it, to defend herself. And uh, it of course was uh, all the talking points that uh, people are paid to do. Um, uh and so she she um was was interesting about her um uh, matter of fact i'll say this after i read all the stuff so yeah uh so they went and found this jocelyn hernandez clip talking about amber rose uh let me see if i can play it for everybody your problem is that you really want to be a white girl your problem is that you really want to be a white girl so i guess you said amber rose is a white Stop being so sensitive because you and I are very cool. So this is, I have never seen this clip before. This is crazy. Mm -hmm. Jocelyn's face is half painted like Harley Quinn. I was about to ask. Ray what J is in the background. It's happening here. I'm assuming this is like the BET celebrity house shit. I don't, mm -hmm. they cut away from it. Yeah, Out of don't. respect for all parties involved, we chose not to show this fight. College Hill and ASU did not condone violence all the time. Uh, let me tell you right now, I don't need to see the, the, the fight. Uh, Amber Rose definitely lost. I've seen Jocelyn fight enough people enough times, including know grown that ass men. She ain't the one to, to fuck know that with. It is no fucking way Amber Rose even held a fair one. Mm. Oh, yeah. Is that a Mario? Jay gonna always give you a great reaction shot. Uh, but uh, yeah, so people keep bringing up that clip to be like, because uh, now it's time to, you know, to, to get her. Now, what's interesting is she defended herself under the shade room when they. When everybody was calling her out to be like, hey, she's a fucking hypocrite. You know, like, first of all, the as I brought up, the slut walk and all this stuff about bodily autonomy and feminism and agency and all this stuff. And then you're sitting and even an article, even doing interviews saying Donald Trump in 2020 need to be held accountable for grabbing women by the pussy and all this stuff. Um, and all of a sudden she's she's done. 
You know, uh, they're pulling up old tweets. Man, fuck the fact that he's old and fuck the fact he was on TV. He's a sexual predator just like Trump and Harvey. I hope they get their day as well. Um, talking about Trump in a picture, someone had a Trump uh, saying Trump think he's slick showing up to the women's march in L.A. and it was a trash can. And so she put that picture up to be like talking, saying he's trash and saying, you know, so she was anti-Trump uh, 2018 even. 2020 even going with the wave but then now she's saying y'all think biden cares about black people uh she called her detractor sad urging them to research the candidates like she did uh she said uh i always put women first y'all want biological men in women's sports i roll emoji trump supports the most reasonable compromise on abortion stop being brainwashed because we're in cats people of color make your own choice um i feel like she definitely highlighted that we're to be like uh i'm not like you the rest of, i'm not like you negroes right i'll never be like you know what i mean like, yeah, and all that did was justify jocelyn's point regardless of how she said it or put it across it right. justifies the point that she was like hey dog i don't think you are embracing your blackness dog i tell my mom i'll never be like any of those negroes um and i you know i always wondered if she was black because i remember a long time ago when she kind of first showed on the scene being like she's a black woman or not because i'm hearing she's from like some island off the coast of africa her people come from there or some shit i'm like i guess that counts as black and then a lot of people was like no she is white she like trust me that's a white lady and i'm like okay if y'all say so i don't know the rules on this race shit and right. i don't know how, i've never heard her talk about how she identified and then that she started talking about how she identified and it was always these kind of nebulous answers and so i you know i guess what is mostly interesting to me with her is how she used to be feminist like she used to be feminist she used to be for women's rights women's empowerment she used to be um pro trans she dated a trans man she's still with trans people for her causes for her slut march and all this shit and the fact that she has switched over i'm just imagining the check clear yes it did yeah like what else could it be it's clearly not like you know i mean donald trump is also a racist she's black people you need to do just because we're people of color like did like i guess the check cleared and and now you just gone full you know whatever for the clicks now let's go back though because i remember all the controversy around her slut marches and and all the speeches she was giving and all the shit at the time and i have to ask because i think it's only right which was real this the real her or was that the real her and i think the reason it matters is because a lot of times when i'm talking about activism for cloud activism tm when i'm talking about social media and how it's affected activism and what it looks like that's the kind of shit i'm talking about it's a quick wave it's a it's a it's a way to get on it's a it's a way that makes you unquestionable it's like being a stand-up comedian by which i mean you become a stand-up comedian by nature of having once attempted stand-up. That's it. Yep. You don't have to be good at it. You ain't got to mm -hmm. be able to fill a room. You don't have to do it for a certain amount of time. You don't need to do it for, you don't need to have an hour. You only have 30 minutes, 10 minutes. Motherfuckers do two open mics. I'm a stand-up comic. Well, a stand-up comic that's been doing it for 15 years and a stand-up comic that just started yesterday aren't the same, but the label's the same for them. Right. And that is what activists is for ugly people or whatever you know like you know how they say like uh activism is hollywood for ugly people or something like that's what it, it's like here's a way to get all the respect and acclaim and accolades by just calling yourself something you know i can't even count how many times we've been compelled especially me someone's been like you should you're you're an activist right and i'm like i'm not mm -hmm. putting that shit in my bio i'm not because mm -mm, i know all the goals with it and i'm good dog yeah i'm not i know what i do do mm -hmm. and i'm not saying it doesn't matter i'm not saying it's not good i'm not holding myself to no activism standards right. i just tell you how i feel about things period i'm not rallying people i'm not causing a march i'm not like I care about black people and all that stuff, but I care about them if we didn't do this podcast. I care right. about them if I just worked the nine to five because I'm black. 
th- th- like I wouldn't call myself an activist. And I think the people that do good for them, but I hope they're really doing the work and they're not like activist TM like she was. Mm-hmm. And so when she's flipping 180 degrees in the opposite direction for a check and a photo opportunity with Trump, I, I'm like, so when was this ever real? Right. And how many other motherfuckers like this are out there still with that label on them that just, you know, they can't really explain their actions from day to day because check came this day, different check came from somebody else the next day. Yep, I've now seen it. Now we on that. Now we on something completely different. Yeah, I hate billionaires. Uh, actually, guys, uh, we should vote for this billionaire. What What was the check? Was the check coming in? What's happening? They the one opening their stage for you? They the one giving you the, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's the difference for you? What's the cause? Oh, this... Fuck all these people on TV that, that I, oh, wait, I'm going to be on MSNBC Sunday. Check us out. You know, like, th- that's that bullshit to me. Um, All right. Uh, Anything else? Um, Oh, yeah. Uh, This in uh, news that uh, I don't even know what to say about. Iran's government is in turmoil after the president died in a helicopter crash. Oh, yeah. Uh, he was the candidate to succeed the 85-year-old Supreme Leader. I don't even know how that works, really. Like, So y'all got a Supreme Leader and a President, but the President not the Supreme Leader, but he can become the Supreme Leader. Yeah, I don't know the rules. I don't even know how they government work like that. Um, they hold regular elections for President and Parliament with universal suffrage, but the Supreme Leader has a final say on all major policies, serves as Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces, and controls the powerful Revolutionary Guard. The Supreme Leader also appoints half of the 12 member Guardian Council, a clerical body that vets candidates for President, Parliament, and Assembly of Experts as an elected body of jurists in charge of choosing the Supreme Leader. So, I yeah i don't know what happens i don't know what this means for the middle east i don't know Mm-mm. what this means for israel right don't any know of this what shit this mean for anybody's wars or anything i don't know what the speculation and conspiracies are what they saying who did what to whom i just i saw that shit and was like oh damn <laughs> right i don't like this whatever this is there's gonna be repercussions behind it don't sound good it does not sir you know that's what i really said i was just like it don't sound good i like you know, it's the kind of thing that I've been watching uh, this TV. I finished watching this first season of the show, Lioness, on Paramount+. Plus. It's the kind of shit that will be a plot point on that, where it's like, we sent a secret team to blow up a helicopter, and the news is going to say it was a crash. And I'll be like, I guess that's how it happens. And then, you know, like, I don't know shit about the way they go zero dark 30 on these niggas and shit. And, then, and now, and you know, the way that shit happens with Iran and certain countries, They'll blame the fuck out of somebody else real quick. They'll be like, oh, it wasn't no crash. Israel did that shit or whatever. And then I'm just like, I, did they do it? I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm scared. Okay. Good luck to everybody. Uh, Target to cut prices on 5,000 products and bid to lure cash strap customers. Yeah, because we ain't got it. People are like broke by broke. Mm-hmm. I think also everything at Target already costs more than mm-hmm. Walmart. It does. Before the pandemic and before inflation, mm-hmm. it already cost more. It was like it's an extra little charge yeah, on five, everything. Five percent high on everything. It's just and it's just to keep the the wheels on the on the carts working, keep the riffraff out of the lobby. Right, carts you know? not sticking to each other, veering to the left. I don't know why. I don't know why it works, but it does work. I don't know what it is about that extra little bit of money that makes. The difference between Walmart people and Target people. We all yeah. know what I'm talking about. Yeah. If you live somewhere that's like in, it might not matter in, uh, it might not matter in New York or something. I don't know how it works. So if you don't have cars, but in the cities with cars and parking lots, everyone will tell you like you go to the Walmart, different experience, a little sketchy. Police towers in the in the in the in the um in parking lot. Parking lot. And you go to Target and it's motherfucking. You walk in and it's like fresh roses. Mm-hmm. And you ask for help, and they don't know they'll put out a little thing in their hand and be like, do, 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 do. It is C50T, 50, 53. You'll be like, oh, okay, thank you. I don't know what it is. I don't know. It's, you go in there, and it's fucking the produce 
department, the vegetables are fresher, the fucking, uh, the, you go to where the meats and stuff is still, there's no wet juice just on the ground. It could be chicken, salmonella, I don't know. Right. There's, it never stinks in there. There's no, the buggies work, the the the, the people are the, the, that wear the red vest actually help you. They want to help you. Mm-hmm. Anyway. They'll ask you, are you lost? I, but I've always believed they've had over, they've been overcharging us. Mm-hmm. Um, but then in addition to that, a lot of this greed that corporate people are doing where they're just charging us more for shit um, is ridiculous. You know, like, like, you know, at this point, it's not an inflation thing. You know, people are just being charged more money. Yes, because they can. Yeah. So, yeah, they plan to slash 5,000 items, bread, coffee, diapers, and thousands of other everyday items this summer. Joining other retailers looking to kickstart business by catering to inflation-weary customers. Conspiracy corner for a second. Okay. 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 All right. I know this is, I know, yeah, I know this is, uh, I normally don't dabble in these, but... I think these companies don't want Trump back. I can see that too. That's my conspiracy. Cause, cause they like, ooh, child, he he make everything worse. This only helps get. This only help Biden. Cause Trump and them main thing is the economy sucks, man. It don't matter if you making more money. It don't matter what the stats say. It don't matter what the employment numbers are. It fucking sucks. It does like, and you need me back. It wasn't as bad under me. Now, did he do a lot of the stuff that and unregulation and shit that is causing it to be bad? Sure, but y'all don't remember that. Y'all don't follow no. Y'all don't read the news and y'all don't care. Y'all just feel bad today. And maybe if you change president, you'll feel good again. You know, and if you're if you're afraid of the bigotry and the racism and all that shit, well, too bad. I'm I'm here to help lower the prices for you. And I think the same thing happened with gas not too long ago. I feel like at some point. Whether it's the Biden administration being like, okay, bitch, we about to start investigating y'all, or whether it's just the call came in and they said, guys, we stay on this path. It's just going to be Trump. And he, that's chaos. Yeah, we already have people acting the fucking fool out of stores. Come on, y'all. Yeah, so I don't know. I don't know, but it feel weird that multiple places are like, okay, guys, damn, lower the prices. It's getting close to election time. You know what? And it's across the board. You right. Because all of a sudden, fast food, they're starting to drop some of them combos. They start to throw yeah. some of them special. They're like, hey, I say we... some articles for Lip Smacking Good about that. Okay, let's go, bitch. Because they was like, you, yes, go so. to, you go to McDonald's, and it's like, fucking two people, this $35. You're like, goddamn, I could have had a restaurant for this. Mm-hmm, child. Okay, don't get me started. Don't even get me started. And had a drink, depending on where you went. Uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They talking about no re- free refills. No free refills. That's what they talking about, Karen. That's what they talking about. Oh, child. Child. Okay. Honey boo boo. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's move into something else. Um, what do we want to talk about? Uh, let's see. Uh, you know what? Maybe we'll do uh, some. Let me do some guess the race. I think I'll do. Guess the race. Oh no, we do a little white people news first. White people news. We're bringing exile to the barbecue. We might be problematic or a little bit dim. The sun's really harsh on our fragile pieces. White people news. Oh, the whites are whiting. Okay, and I'm not talking about the fish. Ben Affleck return of the wedding ring is back as Jen, not that one, visits the pad. It's a lot going on. It's a lot going on, Karen. They think Jennifer uh Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck is is breaking up. They think they they on the rocks. And we, first Ben Affleck was didn't show up to her movie premiere and then he was riding around with no wedding ring for a little bit and people seen them they ain't been pictured together in 72 days um and then damn they got the countdown yeah it, i mean because you know they paparazzi be on them they i mean it was a 
every time they went out somewhere, it was throwing them together. And they would always make sure to take a picture of them talking to each other because Ben has resting bitch face. And they'd be like, look at them fighting again. He just looked like he could always mad. He has that Russell Westbrook face. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime they motherfucking talking, he they always put a caption like, he, oh, they fighting. And it could be her being, who knows what the fuck is happening. But they always, and I think, you know, we're a misogynistic country and it makes people feel good to think a woman is beautiful, Jennifer Lopez, is just a hassle to be around because she's so attractive and, and we all want her and we all uh, whatever. And so now it's the, yeah, but that even that bitch is a bitch. You know, like it's that vibe. And so everyone gets in on it. It's the same reason y'all hate Taylor Swift. It's the same reason people hate Beyonce. It's the same reason that people hate all these rich, famous, celebrity, attractive women, it's always like a, yeah, but secretly she's a bitch, right? It's like, so, like, you know, they've been doing this for months of they're unhappy, but now they have some actual, like, maybe they are unhappy situations happening, you know? Uh, less than 24 hours earlier, Ben seen the signal the end was near for their marriage as he did not have on his wedding ring on Friday, even while going to the kids' school play. While the ring returned, it seems it might have just slipped his mind on Friday. Because, of course, no one's interviewed him or talked to him. Mm-mm. Uh, we just got to assume, you know, how we know. Um, <laughs> we just got to take these pictures. How would I know? How would I know? Right. This is this more important than Simone Biles and her husband. Apparently so. Top uh, news. See, this. look at this picture. They look like they're just talking, but his face look like they're fussing. His face It, it always, always looked like yes, that Yes it does It always look No matter He could be like Well baby You know Let, you know, uh, let me know You know What you want for dinner She was like Yeah I'm having time He's like alright And they like They are at each other's necks And then uh, Jennifer Garner His ex She was the one Who stopped by Saturday For a vi- visit The exes have met up Several times over the weekend For events involving Their kids Finn and Samuel so I mean, they have kids together, people. Yeah, so they're not saying it's uh, fair or cheating. They're just saying like the other Jennifer Lopez didn't show up. Jennifer, the other Jennifer did. So that's what's going on over there. It's getting dicey for them. You know, it's it's it's, it's kind of sad. Yeah, they haven't been photographed today together for forty seven days. That's I guess now it's probably up to fifty or so. So. You know, they you hate to see they're gonna keep us abreast. Yeah, I mean, listen, I want to know. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that's going down in in the white world. You know, this is what they care about, and it's important that 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 we care. Yeah, you know? that we stay on top of what they care about. Yeah. So good luck to them or whatever. Good luck to you all, Ben but, uh, in the jeans. Mm-hmm. We wanted to work out for Ben in the jeans. Uh, let's see. Uh, Motley Crue singer Vince Neil falls on his face at New Jersey show. I wonder if uh, JL Coban was there. Maybe Keith Malley. You know, they, they love this. Uh, Vince Neil <laughs> fell head first at an Atlantic City concert, kicking off the band's highly anticipated return to the stage. And return to the floor, I guess. <laughs> his face plan occurred minutes into the start of Too Young to Fall in Love band's dog of war tour according to ultimate classic rock neil 63 took a spill while prancing across the hard rock cafe hard rock live i'm sorry at edis arena's stage while performing the 1987 tune wild side he reportedly bounced back quickly and didn't miss a beat before continuing the the weekend performance child i know he was hurting the next day Right? Because that, that, I've had that happen before. Without adrenaline, you were like, I got it. And then the next day, you were like, God damn. Yeah, 63, man. Don't Woo. matter if you're rock and roll or not. 63 is still 63. Chad, I fell down before. I was like, God damn. And like days later, my Bible's like, you know what? Bitch, that hurt. <laughs> right. So it's, uh, you know, he's back in action Friday night, report, reportedly performing a 14 song set. So I guess he was okay, you know. Uh, he, he worked it out enough. Um, he took a tumble in 2021, then a solo show that sent him to the Tennessee Hospital with broken ribs. God damn, is anybody? You know what, sir? You can perform, but you need to stop this this bullshitting, sir. Like, you know, you can't be out here fucking two stepping and bopping and shit. Well, that's because you don't know how to rock, Karen. Apparently, I don't know. Okay. That's what the problem is. You don't know nothing right. about no rocking. Right. Like you fucking up the money, sir. They gonna sit. They got. They don't care if you move or not. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kelly Rowland appears to scold a security guard at Cannes Film Festival. What does security guard do? Must have asked her about Beyonce. He did something. Okay, I think I'm back. All right, let's get back to the recording. All right, so um, yeah, Kelly Rowland, I'm, I'm guessing uh, was she? Well, I know she was at the festival. I don't know what she was promoting exactly, but you know, celebrities go to these film festivals all the time, um, and uh, whatever the security guard did, who was a woman, uh, Kelly looked like she ain't like it. So there's a security guard maybe putting her hand up, keeping somebody, you know, being between her and this dude. I don't know. And then Kelly turned back and waved at people, uh, looking beautiful as always. And then Kelly did some, some happened. And you can see right here in this picture, if you zoom in, boom, that's where she had her fucked up. Woo, something got said, something happened. She didn't like something because. Yeah. She turned around and the words that come out of her mouth was like directly, directly at that person and was like, hey. That is the face of you You got me fucked up right there. Then in this one, this is where Kelly uh, let her know she exactly where she had her fucked up because she put that one, that finger in the air like, no, did you shut the fuck up or whatever i don't i don't know if the one was like okay that's enough waving or we gotta get the next guy i don't know what oh, happened and she was like oh you ain't gonna tell me what to do you you, you know what i'm saying <laughs> like she i called, don't know i am the celebrity bitch she like she said so what you think about cowboy carter and then she just said oh i got your cowboy buckaroo and then this one right here was don't you fucking touch me either bitch oh yeah <laughs> yeah yeah she did something i don't know what she did or what she said but she was not happy it's a hold on wait a minute yeah that you you, you got the wrong one that finger is will be done with me cussing you out when i'm done with me cussing you out yeah and also that might be somebody has lost their job like you might not you probably you might not see this person close to her no more shout out to that white lady who's getting her photo on downstairs and chash was like her. i ain't got nothing to do with that yeah and then this was kelly letting her know at the end like and i you absolutely had me fucked up and <laughs> Just in case you thought that you didn't have me fucked up, I would like to remind you now that I'm almost in the building, you had me fucked up. And then this last one, I think, is really for everyone else because they like, who had you fucked up? And that's her saying, she, you, her right there. She had me fucked up, y'all. Yeah. And that looks like um, Gwyneth Paltrow. Down here to the bottom right, don't that look like Gwyneth? It might be. I think I know you don't know white people, but mm -mm. that look like that look like um that look like Gwyneth to me. I don't know. It do that that particular that closer one. But no, uh, the, yeah, it's not saying it's her though. I don't see anything. Yeah, yeah, not not saying it, but but yeah, but yeah it, it looked like yeah, cause it looked like they was probably doing like a red carpet stair thingy, and yeah, and I don't know if she rushed her or like it sounded like she may have rushed her or told her to move on. Her time was up or something. And she was like, hey, what you not gonna do is rush me. What you not gonna do is yell at me. I just appreciate her saying you got me fucked up and there's nothing nobody could do about it. Nothing. You just got to take that. Okay. Uh, let's see. We'll do one more. Sarica. Oh, Sarica. <laughs> Sarah Jessica Parker. <laughs> I know who that is. These white people and their names are so hard. <laughs> like, name your kids something normal, white people. Jesus Christ. How the fuck am I supposed to pronounce this shit? Uh, Sarah Jessica Parker goes sheer while filming and just like that. If her bra isn't showing, she isn't living. Okay. Yeah. Um, Ooh, freedom. She got to get them titties out there for us, guys. 
Yeah, they, like, they used to do that thing where, you know, they would constantly uh, do and just, they nipples would be out. That literally used to be a thing. Y'all gonna get these nipples out. I guess we're gonna get them then, dog. Yeah, I don't know if she's a nipple person, though. She's a bra person. She's a cleavage person, I think. Oh, okay. Okay. She's like, yeah, y'all gonna get these titties. Yeah, y'all gonna get them strapped up, but you're gonna get them. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, she uh, she's, uh, couldn't help but poke fun. Uh, her doc character's well documented love of peekaboo lingerie. Uh, so I don't know what this scene is. It, it, they're, f- they're filming this for the movie or promo or what. I'm guessing uh, some sort of promo for the movie. There's roses in the, in the lingerie yeah. of it. Um, it's pretty. If her bra isn't showing, she isn't living. One commented on every outfit from Sex in the City's Instagram post. One thing Carrie gonna do is show us the bra. Is show that bra. Fans far fans far prefer the see through style over the polarizing gingham bonnet Parker wore to shoot scenes the day prior, which drew comparison to Holly Hobby, Strawberry Shortcake, and Little Miss Muffet on social media. Well, they aren't showing those. They just show her posing with these titties. Um, oh damn yeah i don't know what that look is mm. yes yeah, sis mm. yeah you definitely got the strawberry shortcake looking it right there <laughs> it does they did a little it? too much with the, a little too much with the hat i think yes um, yeah the dress is cute but yeah the hat she's not pulling the hat off and, and i don't know what the hat needed but yeah, that's not the it's hat. not even the same really pattern as the dress or nothing Mm-mm. it's just like yeah, I, I'm not fucking with it. It's, it's definitely giving I, Polly I, Pocket. I, I don't. I, mean, I right? Yeah, not not a fan. What kind of Cabbage Patch doll shit y'all think y'all got going on? <laughs> right, as a grown-ass woman. Like, we don't want to see that. The hell? Um, And I think that's it for white people news. Uh, let's uh, see if we can get into some uh, guess the race, and then we'll uh, wrap this thing up uh, as soon as I put my guess the race music. What time is it? It's time to guess the race. 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 Oh, there's Walmart people and there's Target people. A greeter got beat in a Walmart recipe, I mean receipt beef, cops say. An elderly Walmart greeter suffered injuries to his face and head after being punched in the eye by a North Carolina man whose girlfriend was angry that she was asked to show her receipt. Vincent Battaglia, 68, told cops that he was checking receipts yesterday. He's the greeter. We're not guessing his race. Yeah, I thought a lot of Walmart, they had got rid of a lot of those positions, didn't they? I don't go to Walmart, Karen. I'm not a Walmart person, so okay. I wouldn't know. Oh, okay. So maybe you and your people go there, and maybe you should be telling us because those of us that go to Target, we don't we don't mess around with that type of nonsense. Greeter? <laughs> yeah. What's a greeter? Huh? Okay, at Target, everyone greets you because well, that's, that's what, true. That's what we believe in. Okay, that's how we get down. But you know, for you and yours, I mean, I'm sure that. You know, it's I tell my mom I'll never be like any of those Negroes. I see what kind of household this is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, uh, so the greeter said uh, he was confronted by the man who was upset that he had stopped his girlfriend earlier at the exit. He advised he was just doing his job. That is when Tomisha Robs, 28, allegedly began yelling at her boyfriend to take care of him. What? In response to the Golden, we are guessing their race, and they're both the same race. Trevon Wadden, 27, punched the elderly victim in his left eye, which caused him to fall to the ground and strike his head. They fled the store without offering aid to the victim who had injuries to his face and head. Well, I mean, if once you punch a nigga in the eye, you can't really just be like, oh, man, are you okay, buddy? I didn't mean to do exactly what the fuck I thought would happen when you punch a 68-year-old. <laughs> Pray, the you don't think they're going to fall? Investigators who are familiar with Robs and Wyden from previous calls. Oh, previous calls. Oh, you don't want to be one of the previous previous <laughs> Leons. <laughs> you then look up on the wall. You on the list. You don't want to do be, not serve these people. Let me tell you what you don't want to be with the cops. A previously on this episode. Any type list, of, right? Previously on uh, the police station. <laughs> no. <laughs> 
But yeah, they were familiar with him from previous calls. They were arrested the pair at a High Point residence, which is a few miles from Walmart. Yeah, they are. They was like, yeah, they over at the High Point. Yeah, all right. Yeah, they even knew where they live because guess what? You was previously on. Yeah, you talking about one two seven uh, first street? Yeah, we'll be over there in a second. Mm -hmm. Robs and Wyden were each charged with misdemeanor assault, while Wyden was also cited for failure to appear in court in connection with a separate criminal matter. Um, the court records describe Robs as unemployed, while the 240-pound Wyden is identified as a cook for East Coast Wings and Grill. <laughs> oh, shit. East Coast Wings and Grill. I bet they wings is good, though. I bet you they fire. If he cooking them, listen, I like a little bit of felonious assault with my <laughs> wings. <laughs> I find it make it go better, you know? Everybody know you want the uncle on the grill that, that got a checker pass. We all know that. Anyway, uh, guess the race of Tomisha Robs and Trevon Wadden. Oh, black. All right, let's check the chat room, uh, see what they believe the race of these two Walmart people are, giving out Walmart greeter beaters. <laughs> Greetings and beatings. That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> right. Over at Walmart is greetings and beatings. Apparently so. Uh, just like the ar alarm said when they went in. <laughs> black, black, wop, 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 wop. Previously on, do they stuff? <laughs> <laughs> uh, too many dead giveaways. Hard ERs. Black, hard shopping Negroes. The blacks. All right. Um, let's just say Aaron. Uh, let's just say Amber Rose will be very disappointed with the way these people. Uh, probably vote. The correct answer ah! is black. And that wing place sound pretty good. Uh, looked it up. I think we got one here in we Charlotte. Do. Okay. Do. Uh, but I don't know. If, I, I don't know if the people in there got felonies on the grill. I hope they do. Oh, but that's true. We don't we know. Just gotta. It's like you know. I don't know if they season it with the blood of the elderly and innocent. I don't know. Anyway, that's them. Ah! That is them. Uh, hopefully, they're going to get married. Cute couple. Um, that's also like a nightmare. I don't think I would ever date a, you know, handle this for me, ass woman. Mm -hmm. like, you start some shit, now I got to beat somebody up? Or I got to catch a charge? Chad, I know it's a running joke for you, Chad. You ain't got to worry about me. Because mm -hmm. you know in the car, you're going to definitely, if you don't do nothing, she's going to definitely be like, see, you a bitch. Mm -mm. You let that man ask me for a receipt. I would not dare put that pressure on you. For what? For what? For who? I mean, I'll listen. I'd rather just listen to her complain that it was racist, and we both like, yeah, I think it might have been racist. All then, the way home, right? Then to be like, well, I'm, I'm going to jail tonight. <laughs> yeah, Chad, I don't know about trying to get no unnecessary bail money. A uh, man takes a bite out of crime. A man fueled by an extensive cocktail of party drugs attacked a cop at a music festival and bit a large chunk out of the officer's head, exposing the victim's skull bone. God damn, Wolverine, what is you doing? <laughs> Ooh. Responding late Sunday to a disturbance at Soul, Mu Soul Fest Music and Arts Festival in Ponce de Leon, Florida, police encountered James Michael Anderson, 35, who reportedly admitted using LSD, ketamine, mushrooms, ecstasy, and PCP that evening. Apparently, it gives you mutant powers. He beat him to the white meat of his head. That's what they used in the Weapon X program. Apparently so. Investigators allege that the 6'1", 280-pound Anderson, who was volunteering at the festival, attacked a male cop from behind and tried to dislodge his, forearm from his, or his firearm from his holster. It was during that confrontation when Anderson bit the deputy and removed a large portion of flesh exposing the victim's skull bone. Anderson was subsequently transported to a ho local hospital where he reportedly admitted to biting the deputy and complained that he had hair in his teeth. Yes, of course. It's one of the reasons I don't bite people's skulls. Yeah, you're going to be flossing that shit out for days. You know? Um, Anderson, Anderson cops noted also moaned that police were at the music festival making drug crime arrests. Y'all only did this to make the Baptists happy, he declared. Oh, the Baptists. He's, uh, he got them there. Not because sound like you were being Open disturbed. It sound like I think they was right by arresting you. No, Karen, this this is Big Baptist at work. Mm -mm. Other people the, was, was high, not bothering nobody, but you. He was minding his business on LSD, ketamine, mushrooms, ecstasy, and PCP. Well, and yeah, here damn. come the cops doing the you work was on the whole ass cocktail. Here go the cops doing the the bit in the Big Baptist, 
arresting people for minding their own drug using business. Yeah, really. what did they have? Did, 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 were you looking at the drug selection? Like, yeah, go ahead and give me the tornado, throw everything in there. I'm like, God damn. I think he just said, I want the sampler. <laughs> yes, I want the flight. Give me the flight. All right. I would like the drug flight, please. <laughs> yes. Whatever the drug flight, please. One, one, one of everything. One of each drug, please. Uh, he's charged with two felonies, aggravated battery on a law enforcement officer and resisting an officer with violence. Locked up in county jail. He's scheduled for a June 5th arraignment. He lives in Westville, a Florida panhandle town near the music festival grounds. The officer was beaten and was treated for his injuries. Uh, and later released. Prosecutors have filed a motion seeking court order test to determine whether he alleged the alleged Biden could expose him to various blood patho- pathogens. Right. Honestly, I think this is the origin story of Drug Man, who's <laughs> going to be the next Marvel superhero. Ah, yes. You're beaten by bitten by a radioactive uh, uh, addict, and then now he got all the powers of drugs, which is uh, not very good at being a hero. But he's high as shit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> with great with great pie comes response comes sleep apparently so All right, comes no responsibility right <laughs> comes irresponsibility right with great power comes a lot of irresponsibility <laughs> karen guess the race white parents going with white let's check the chat room see what they believe bleach blonde big baptist white uh, three first names white. This sounds like how you become a feral ghoul and fall out white. <laughs> white. The correct answer is uh, Soul Fest got me thinking black. Okay. Well, would it help if I told you to spell S O L? Soul Fest, not like Sun Fest, not S O U L, like Soul. White, 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 jaw tighten. <laughs> the correct answer is white. One person was thinking black, I'm gonna give him a boo. Mm-mm-mm. Ooh, yeah. chow. Yeah, you know he's not black too, because he was against Big Baptist, you know? That's that's our what main What did Big Baptist do to him? That's our main denomination down here. We, we would have we would we would have been on their side. All right, Karen is uh two for two, which Woo-hoo! means we gotta go to the bonus round. That bitch was white. I ain't racist. How can I be racist about anybody or anything in my life? How can I? Call them niggas. Just call them niggas. It's time to get gold, the race. Gold chain it's wearing fried chicken and biscuit eating the monkey. Eight baboon big guy fast running. High jumping spear chucking 360 degree basketball. And a Florida man was arrested after he was found hiding in a remarkably small dryer. Uh, And the dryer had a glass door, so not the smartest. Not the smartest hiding place. They put no clothes on, but you couldn't. Shit, you can see straight through it. At least he knows how to fold. Apparently so. Did him. In an attempt to hide from police, a wanted Florida man folded himself into a small front-loading dryer, a feat of audacity and pliability that was eventually thwarted. David Jackson, 31, was being sought by cops on felony assault and weapons charges when investigators received a tip that Jackson was inside a Pensacola residence. During a search Friday at the residence, David discovered him hiding inside the laundry room inside a remarkably small dryer drum. Uh, he was wearing a purple Star Wars T-shirt, uh, and he was pulled from the appliance and arrested. And the shirt had no wrinkles. <laughs> <laughs> he put himself in there with some fabric softener, <laughs> and it came out smelling downy right, fresh. Right, wrinkle-free. Right. The cops really hung him out to dry on this one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they did. <laughs> Yeah, they asked him how he got in there. He said he took a tumble. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, uh, he is locked up in lieu of a hundred twenty thousand dollars bond. What the fuck did he do? What is he charged with? Um, uh, let's see. 
He's facing felony and misdemeanor narcotics charges. He was found earlier this year hiding inside a dryer in the kitchen of a Louisiana home. So he like the dryer <laughs> bandit. This is his place to hide. <laughs> this is his jam. They get anywhere? Dryer. He got they, to, right. that's, that's his spot. That's they, his calling card, the dryer. They knew exactly what to do. They was like, check the washing machine. And then they was like, oh, okay. Wherever the washing and the dryer is, yeah, we know dryer. he there. <laughs> he's not in the washing machine. He's definitely in the, in, in the dryer. You know. Uh, all right, Karen. Guess the race of Mr. David Jackson. David Jackson. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go white. All right, Karen's going white. Um, I think his race is uh, dry clean only. You know, that's the ironic part. Uh, let's see what the okay. You okay, you yeah. like you trying to think over there or something? Yes, I was thinking about the last name Jackson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, I, I'm thinking about some things. I think I'm going to change my mind. And if I'm wrong, I'll take this L. I'm, I'm going to change it to black. Karen's going black. All right. Mm -hmm. I have to move out of Florida. That's not, okay. That's not a guess. <laughs> I have to move out of Florida. Uh, oh, dang. Let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, okay. Feels like this is a brother. The bond amount equals black. Black. David Wrinkle Free Jackson is black. Ha! <laughs> wrinkle Free. Black man missing one sock somehow. Uh, all Jacksons is niggas. He gonna pay equal black action. Jackson, he's a black. He's black son. The correct answer is black. You got it right, Karen. Mm -mm. Oh yeah, cause I thought about some. I was like, that's a high ass bond. Right. Uh, but I kept saying he got a Star Wars shirt. But I was like niggas like Star Wars too. Like it, it was a thing that I was like the Jackson. I was like I don't mm -hmm. know, I don't really know. I mean, it's White Jacksons, but you know that's normally a mm -hmm. black name. So I just went through that in my head and got back to black. Okay, yeah, nah, that's quite a load of thinking that you did. <laughs> uh, all right, let's move on from this cycle. <laughs> it's time to do some sword ratchetness. <laughs> Surprised they didn't get him for money laundering. <laughs> That's a good one. As y'all can tell from these jokes, I'm the only one that does this around the house. Uh, man <laughs> injured in sword attack. What are you trying to say? Nothing. Nothing. I don't want no static. <laughs> <laughs> a man. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to get hung out to dry. <laughs> I said that one first, and no, you can't have credit. A man injured in sword attack. Thanks, emergency services for saving his life. That's right. I am abusive. That girl was right. I didn't laugh at her joke because I said it five minutes ago. Damn, she got me, y'all. After 20 <laughs> years of marriage. <laughs> Fuck, I've been that exposed. was finally right. <laughs> I should have I laughed at that and played the sound. All right. Should have went extra hard. Yeah. Now she's out there. I told you, niggas. He's Puff Daddy. <laughs> a man injured in a sword attack in East London is thank emergency services and his family for saving his life. Henry De Los Rios Polonia, 35, an IT engineer from Hainault, is currently in the hospital after being stabbed in his home on Tuesday morning. Uh, Mr. De Los Rios Polonia was described by his sister, Jessica De Los Rios, 31, as a hero for protecting his family from the assailant. Uh, he has since shared a photo of social media from his hospital bed with a message thanking those who saved his life. I would like to start by thanking all the nurses, paramedics, and doctors of the NHS for keeping me alive, he said in a post uh, to Instagram stories after sending gratitude to the police for risking their lives. He also thanked friends and families, family and all those who made sure he did not bleed out. Um, he let's said he has a long journey ahead of him. He's a dual Spanish-Brazilian national living in Newham, East London. Um Oh, no, I'm sorry. I guess the person that stabbed him, Marcus Arduini Monzo, 36, is a dual Spanish-Brazilian national living in New Am East London. He appeared in court accused of murdering Daniel Anjorin as he was walking to school on Tuesday and injuring four other people. Mr. De Los Rios previously told the PA news agency that her brother was, oh, Mrs., that her brother was recovering in a hospital after sustaining a deep wound to his hand. 
So I guess was this the person that attacked all those people, and this was someone that got like hurt but not killed? Because I know that that boy got killed. Mm-hmm. Man, um, yeah, I like, jumped in like, hey, and ended up getting fucked up. Yeah, because they're not even saying what the attack motivation was, or but apparently what this person was not was not. The, I don't know. I'm assuming not the targeted person, but you don't know. It, yeah, it doesn't make sense. He was stabbed in his home. The other person, I thought they were stabbed in the street, walking to school. I don't know what the mm. fuck this is about. So I don't, you know, maybe let me Google Marcus Arduini Monzo, see if he that dude. Because this story is kind of all over the place to me. Uh, probably the way it's written. Instagram, he is a white man. <laughs> oh, okay. Right, he is not white. He's brown, Brazilian, not white. Da, da, da. So he's a Brazilian person. Uh, suspect in Lord and Sword, London Sword Attack. So it is that dude. It is that dude. Damn. And then Instagram, they arguing about how Brazilian is not white, so they don't want to. They don't want people describing him as white, uh, even though he was racist and stabbed a black kid to death. Apparently, at any rate, I, uh, that's what they're speculating on Instagram. I don't know if those are facts. Uh, that's it for today's episode. We'll be back. Thanks for listening. We appreciate y'all. We uh, do. You know, shout out to all the just the tippers. Sorry that we had to end that program, but once again, we'll have some exciting news to announce eventually. Uh, hopefully, coming up very soon here. And until next time, I love you. I love you too. Mwah. Bye, everybody. Y'all have good.